if everybody will be seated and find your spot. We'll go ahead and get started with our little meeting here today. I'll give everybody enough time to sit down there so we're not disrupted too bad. Our goal is that we have about four or five things on the agenda to go over, and we're going to give everybody about five minutes to go over that. And they're going to talk about their, what they got going on. Then they'll take a couple questions, and we want to try to keep things moving as quickly as we possibly can and hold it to about an hour so everybody don't get tired and sleepy and start dozing off. And, you know, Mike Pelier has a bad habit of, <sighs> no, I'm just kidding. He's got one good arm left. There he goes. Yeah, yeah. can't raise his arm for any questions. Do have some snacks and stuff over here, so feel free to help yourself, all right? First off, I want to welcome you and thank you for coming to our merchant meeting right here. I think we've got a lot of information to give you in a short period of time. A lot of folks have got some stuff here that they want to make sure that you're aware of, so give them your undivided attention. And uh, if you've got any questions, we'll, we'll go through that here shortly. First off, we're going to introduce our chamber director, Ms. Katie Hedelman. Katie comes on up. Now, she's a little nervous, so don't, don't look at her. Don't stare at her. Y'all stare at the screen, all right? She's going to be talking about our SRC and our BDC collaboration along with Jordan and Zach, okay? So here you go, Katie. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for hosting tonight, and thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. It was important as we, um, I started about a month ago with the chamber, and um, Zach Barraclo, um, Brian, our town manager, uh, Dale at the, the Business Development Center, and Karen with the Sparta Revitalization Committee all said we need a standing meeting, and we're going to meet every Monday and talk about what's going on, because there's a lot of overflow, and there's a lot of things that we're all doing, and we want to make sure we're on that same boat going in the same direction. With the meetings, we meet every Monday, um, and some some days it's four hours. I mean, it's a it's a morning meeting that starts at nine, um, and it goes two to to four hours, and we are talking about everything and anything. And we decided at this meeting that we wanted to bring everyone together and talk about what's happening downtown and what's happening with our streetscape, with our Christmas light program, with music on Main, and also talk about what's going on with the chamber. And, and again, there's a lot of new things happening. There's a lot of energy downtown. Um, I'm really excited to be here uh, to work with the folks that I'm working with. Jordan, would you like to come up? This is Jordan Edwards. Jordan is uh, our Main Street coordinator. She's working. <laughs> she really loves the attention. <laughs> Uh, she, she's my right-hand man. Um, she works with me. Uh, we have put an office uh, here or at the visitor center designated just for Sparta revitalization. We think it's important we're under one roof. If you haven't come out to see our new visitor center and our new chamber office, come and see it. Thank you, Brian Edwards and the town for doing an amazing job with the renovation. And it looks amazing. And every day you come in, it looks a little different. We have a lot of our local artisans that are donating art. Um, we've moved furniture around. We've, We've had couches come. We have a lot of new things. So every day, we want to create a welcoming and happy environment. We want to represent our county um, well with happy faces. We're working on an ambassador program to get volunteers to work at the visitor center. So when our visitors come, we can let them know what, why we love Allegheny County. So Jordan, um, and please come visit me anytime. I'm there. Doors always open. Any questions, um, come on. But I wanted just to touch on the fact that Business Development Center, Sparta Revitalization, the town, the county, SRC, and the chamber are all working together on one team to make sure that we work through and weather through what's happening. And we've got a lot of exciting things on the horizon. So I'd like to give Jordan just a second to talk to you. And again, we appreciate your time and coming out tonight. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jordan. I know that some people think my name is Sarah Dalton because that is the name of the young lady who held my position before me. So just everybody know, I'm Jordan. I am your main street director for SRC, and then I'm also the communications coordinator for the chamber. We went, we went through several different job titles. We thought that one flowed nicely. So that's who I am. I think some people are always a little bit confused why SRC is in the chamber office, and I think it really makes sense whenever I'm coordinating events 
for Main Street and whenever I'm working closely with merchants, having that merchant relationship really flows over well into the chamber position as well. Helps me to really solidify my communications and also offer the best services possible for both entities. And that's really all I have to speak on. Zach, do you want to say a few words? Are we good to go? All right, does anybody have any questions at this time for either Katie or I about this collaboration or what we're doing in each of our respective roles? We are gonna end with a little dance just because <laughs> we're at the Jubilee. But thank you again for coming out and come and visit us. Come see what's happening at the uh, Visitor Welcome Center in a chamber. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, ladies. You wanna say anything, Zach? Give you a second go at it. All right, Zach. Uh, our next speaker uh, is Dale Cabney, and Dale's going to come up and talk about our visitor website and our app update. So give it up for uh, Mr. Dale Cabney. So thank you, Mayor. Um, we, we are making uh, quite a bit of headway with our visitors app and our website. Our website is up. I hope you've had an opportunity to take a look at the website and as uh, Zach pulls it up, there's just a couple of things that I'd like to point out. One is there is a tremendous amount of data on that website, and we want to make sure that, that everything on there is accurate. So I'd love for you to take a look at it, kind of go through, look at all the different uh, listings to make sure that we have the right information on there. Um, so double check the information behind us. The second piece is especially with the events. And if you can, can you get us to the events, Zach? So Sarah Dalton, who Jordan mentioned, is our, our marketing coordinator and she is entering all of this information in there. And the thing that I love about this website and the events is that when an event has passed, it automatically rolls off the website. So when people come to the website, they're not looking at things that are three months old or six months old, so it automatically rolls off. We, we have had a tremendous amount of discussion about what should go on this uh, events calendar. And uh, we, we realize at some point we have to draw a line between what is an event that should go on the website and what isn't. That's pretty fluid, so we, we value your input as you look through that and you say, well, you know, I see this on there and that probably shouldn't be on there, or I see something that should that's not on there that should be on there. So we value your input with that. And uh, the final thing that I'll mention about the website is uh, it has some uh, analytics that is tied to it. So every week Sarah gets a printout and she can look through that and she can see the number of people that have visited the website. She can see the page that they visited. She can see how long they stayed on each page, where, where they went, the progression they went, which helps us with the layout. But maybe more importantly, she, it can let us know where the people are from that are visiting the website. So one of the, just as an example, last week I was looking through that information and we've really increased our visitor, um, the visitors to the website from the Mooresville area, which I, me personally, I think that's a, a real target rich area for us to start to promote. It's only just a little over an hour away and that's, uh, that's an area that we really feel like we can begin to promote to. So that's the website. Um, so if there's a single downfall with the website, it's that if people go to use it on their mobile device and they're up here visiting and they have the wrong cell carrier, <laughs> <laughs> they, they will not be able to pull it up. So to help alleviate that, we have uh, contracted with Simple View Services out of Phoenix, Arizona, and they are <clears throat> we have actually got the app 99% ready to go. Uh, so all we're waiting on is the final approval from Apple that they can list it in the Apple Store. And what that will allow visitors to do is download the app. It'll have all the information that's on the website plus some. So, and uh, the thing that's really cool about it is if somebody is standing right here in front of the Jubilee and they pull up, okay, where can I go get something to eat in Allegheny County? They go to that app. It'll list all of the, all the restaurants, all the vendors that serve food and it lists them based on proximity to where they're standing right at that moment. So if they're standing right here, it's going to list Becca's probably as the number one choice because they're right next door to Becca's. If they're 
if they're down at Trey Foley's at, at, uh, at his store, it's going to tell what's the closest place to them right there. And it'll give them turn by turn directions on how to get there. So we feel like there's going to be a lot of usage for that. and It's going to be a lot of good information. Again, it's only as good as the information that we include in it. So once we, we get that up and going, I really hope that you'll download that and go through it and get used to it because the key is we need to steer people to that, that app. It's, it's basically worthless to us if people aren't downloading it. So we'll send some information out um, that if someone's down at Muddy Creek and they say, I'd like more information about this, Shauna says, okay, here's a card that tells you how to download our mobile app and it has everything you need to know about Allegheny County. So that's kind of where we're at with the, the website and the mobile app. Is there any questions? Yes. If you're standing right here, is that something you're entering or is that, do, is that Google Maps that's going to direct them? It's Google Maps. So they'll have, they'll have to have. To be sure they are listed in the right place on Google Maps, their business? No, right? we've, already entered their, we've already entered their information in. So it's there as long as the person has their um, GPS turned on their phone. Okay. It'll, it'll give them those directions. Although that is still true, that yeah. everyone should make sure right. that everyone should they're make, correctly listed on Because sometimes when we were doing maps. work on Main Street, some right. people were listed in, in other places that yeah. they were really not located in. Correct. Yes, Mindy? What is that web address? That was on the Allegheny County website today, yesterday. That is, that's authenticallyallegheny.com. Yes, Karen. So is the website on the, uh, your mobile, can you see events eventually just on the website without downloading the app? Yes, you can. And so the, the website will actually scale to your phone, so it's mobile friendly. It's not yet. No, it is now. It is now? It is now. It is now. It's, just the, it's just the cell coverage that if somebody doesn't have cell reception, they can't pull up any website. Okay. So. Yeah, but I'll get with you afterwards. When I, We'll make sure that you can see that. So any other questions? I just wondered if there's any update on when AT&T is going to activate all these cell towers they bought along 20. Yeah, that's not a question I could answer, but I'm sure Brian would love to field that one. <laughs> uh, we, we don't, we think never. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, they contracted out the construction of all these sites uh, under a, a different uh, business model, I guess. Uh, they've gotten involved in purchasing Netflix and DirecTV and a lot of big things going on in New York City and places other than Sparta. And so I think they've lost interest in activating these sites. Uh, there is some discussion going on now about some other carriers maybe purchasing that. Is that right, Jeff? So, you know, it's, it's not anything from the standpoint of the county. Uh, there's no influence, I think, that uh, anybody here would have to deal with corporate AT&T and, and other things. So that's the best information that I have. Anybody know anything different than that? That's Well, the way, <clears throat> and the way the government works sometimes, these licenses were awarded and you buy and you paid for them and you had a certain amount of time to build them out the definition of is in government changes from time to time but what happened was the reason you seen these cell towers built was if the tower was built they sent to the commission that step one is completed service is available that's the way the fcc defined that the area was built was if they applied and built the towers they never, at that point, that was just to buy them time until they decided whether they was going to build out the service or not. So the best chance that we have now, at and is not going to build out these thin rural areas. They've already said so. So the best thing that can happen now is, is if they strike a deal with another carrier to buy the tower sites that they put up that they didn't plan on activating at that time. So I, tower's been built two, three years, four, five years. Yeah. They just yeah. bought time is what they did to decide whether they wanted to serve that area or not. So I don't think they really had an, a real intention. at and It's a subsidiary of at and Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So they're in the process of reshuffling right now. 
So probably what's going to end up happening is those tower sites will be sold to um, Verizon or somebody, and they probably will be activated, but nobody knows how long that might be. Yeah. And so I'll come right back to you, Bill. And Cynthia just, she prompted me to think, her working at the uh, visitor center up on the parkway, they're very limited because of government regulations about what kind of information they can give out there at the, uh, at the visitor center. However, Cynthia can say to folks, you can download our mobile app at authenticallyallegheny.com and they'll have all the information they need. Okay, Bill, one more question, Bill. Is there a template or something to, to submit events on that stage? Um, if you'll get with Sarah, she can give you the kind of a layout for that. All right, thank y'all. All right. Thank you, Dale. Our next speaker is our town manager, uh, Brian Edwards, is going to come up, and he, along with Zach, is going to give us a kind of an update with our streetscape and our water line project after he gets off the phone again. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I want to uh, thank Jack Jones for letting us use the Jubilee facility. This is a great place, Jack, and we really appreciate you working with us to. Uh, let us have this for uh, this uh, type of a meeting. The other thing is I want to encourage everybody to go down and uh, visit with Katie in the new Vista Center. It is uh, definitely a big improvement, I believe. That whole back room area has been converted into administrative office space. And uh, so the front part now is a true, much more of a true Vista Center opportunity. And I think it's going to serve our visitors very well. So go by and take a look at that if you haven't. Uh, on our streetscape project, we are still working with the USDA folks and with our engineers to uh, get our plans approved. Uh, we are not on schedule at all that we had hoped to be on, and so that's just uh, something we're going to have to continue to live with. <laughs> uh, the uh, our plan right now is, of course, when we get approval from USDA, we have had some very productive meetings with the Blue Ridge uh, Energy about their, uh, their lines and also with Skyline about the uh, fiber and the cables. Uh, we've had good meetings with DOT, so I feel like that we've got a good team and we will have a, uh, a very effective program when we can get into construction. The timeline for us is after USDA approval, uh, we have to uh, go to bid. Uh, we can't bid the project until we have USDA approval. And the reason for that is they are the primary fund funder for the project. And that's just uh, part of the uh, requirements and the rules and the regulations that come along with the funding. We are uh, borrowing $1.5 million from USDA. Uh, they have included with that a $409,000 grant to go with that, and then we have a $300,000 Appalachian Regional Commission grant, and then with the local funding, so we have 2.3 million budget to work with to do the work that, that our model has outlined. The, uh, as I say, until we won't have a schedule until the project goes to bid, we have a contractor that's approved. When, a, when we do get bids, we have to go through the USDA process again because they have to vet the contractors, the engineers will make recommendations and we'll make recommendations, but there will be another process of those contractors being approved to do the construction. So it's it's a uh, governmental regula regulated process that, uh, as Jeff said, that's you know you, we have to we have to follow the rules, uh, and we have no alternatives uh, in that regard. Uh, but after the project is bid, the first phase will be installation of the new water line and the conduit that will carry the overhead cables. Uh, not, we won't be making any connections in the short term, but hopefully everything will be in place uh, and underground. Uh, after the water line is installed, uh, the next phase would be sidewalks and curb and gutter. Uh, and the final phase would be the milling down and the resurfacing of the main street. So. Um, at this point, that's really all the information that I have that I can uh, share with you. It, we wish we were further along, but we're not, and uh, we'll deal with it, and we'll continue to work to make this project work. Any questions? Robin? 
few for you, Brian. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, you know, I'm hearing rumors that Skyline and, uh, you know, the cables, um, communications, um, that, that Skyline and Carolina West and whoever else, um, not Carolina West, but um, are, are not going to pay for it. And I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you that there are rumors out there. Well, they're, they're, they're not going to pay for it. And that was never the plan that okay. they would pay for it. Yeah. No, that's always been part of, of our budget and our responsibility. Okay. Now, I will say this, Skyline and Blue Ridge are both very supportive of the project and they will be helping us any way and every way they can and they will minimize any of those costs to us. Okay. But it's not their responsibility to pay for it and, and never has been. Okay, so, uh, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so all of this money that you just mentioned, um, that is money that will be allotted to that particular um, well, our, our entire project that I, that I just outlined. I mean, not the whole thing. I know that. But it, is that included in putting the power line? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. All right. Yes. Good. Because, I mean, when I'm talking to people, mm -hmm. I want to know sure. the facts. Yes. Um, so, um, you're, okay, so, so once the uh, USDA approves, then, okay, like you said, um, we have to go bidding. Right. Um, so... Is that going to be a quick process? Is that not necessarily? Be? That that's a, that's a uh, again a regulated process under the North Carolina General Statutes uh, procurement North Carolina procurement law, and we also have to satisfy the USDA requirements for competitive bidding. Okay. So uh, we have to advertise. Uh, that will go uh, locally and it'll go statewide and okay. even regionally in terms of, uh, of contractors that might have an interest in bidding on the project. Uh, those bids are evaluated based on number one price, uh, number two the ability of that contractor to satisfy the scope of work, uh, insurance requirements, uh, uh, workers comp, I mean there's a, a very long checklist that each contractor will have to be vetted and they will have to satisfy, uh, there's a bond required, uh, those bonding requirements are significant, they'll have to show us proof of insurance and proof of bond. So, uh, no, it's not a quick process. <laughs> so, so, now, it's a, that's mm, another question mm -hmm. that leads me to another question. Yeah. So, you've got all of this um, going on with the bidding, mm -hmm. and that sounds like a pretty long process. Pro probably, a th probably a three to four week. Three to four week. Yes. For all the contractors. Yes. So, um, is your office staffed to, to, you know, I mean, are you going to be, I mean, is the, the town of Sparta going to be doing all of, taking all the bids and doing all the paperwork? No, we, we, have a, we have an engineering firm. M McGill Associates is our engineering firm. Okay. And so they are providing uh, the engineer drawings, and they will provide the primary supervision over scope of work, uh, reviewing the bids. So they, they are, they're hand in hand with us. Their engineers will be doing that type of work. Yeah, so we do. We do not have staff at Town of Sparta capable or, or, right. or qualified to. Well, it sounds like once the approval, mm -hmm. once we get the approval from USDA, whenever that is, right. we don't have any idea when that is, right? It not could really. Be, it yeah. could be August. It could be yeah. next year. It could be. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so once that takes place, um, and all of a sudden <coughs> you start getting in the bids and going through all that paperwork mm -hmm. and everything, what kind of time frame? I mean, any idea on that time well, frame? Well, more than likely, uh, if the bids come in within a three to a four week, five, possibly five week period of time, depending. And part of the of the of our interest there is to make this process as open and uh, out there as we can, because we need competitive bidders. Mm -hmm. If we don't get uh, a good realm of competitive bidders, that means the price is going to be higher, we've got less options, then we have to start making significant adjustments to, to the project. So the broader that it is and the more bidders we have, and so we will be not only advertising for bids, but we will be soliciting bids from contractors uh, in the area that we know are capable and qualified to do the work, and we would hope that those folks uh, would submit bids and you're going to have a deadline for that. Once you put your bids out, you're going to say, mm -hmm. "I'm in." Yep. Yep. So yeah. There'll be a, there'll be a, a bid dead, a deadline uh, in the advertisement, okay. and it will give uh, outline the scope of work, and it will say when bids will be accepted by such and such a date at a certain cutoff time. And those are sealed bids, and then they would be opened uh, uh, publicly. Uh, but the engineer would be responsible for monitoring that process. Mm -hmm. He records all of the bidders, records the bid amounts. 
uh, that's all that's done on that initial day. And then they really get into vetting the uh, uh, bids to see that they satisfy the scope of work. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it would be uh, several days and maybe even a couple of weeks while that process goes on. Okay. Yeah. So as a merchant, mm -hmm. um, we all want to know when that USDA approval is. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So um, can we be assured that we're going to be kept ab abreast of that because yeah. we weren't at the last merchant meeting and I think there were some people that were disappointed with that, that we had this meeting and then we didn't hear from right. you, and, uh -huh. you know, um, um, that's why some people are not here tonight, um, I'll have to say. I'm just, I'm just yeah. facing that. Sure, no, that I, yeah. Um, but well, we, we've got the website, and, and, and that's up, and it's active, and it's got dates, and it's got as much information as we have, and, and it's on there. Right. So, uh, and we discuss it every month at the town council meeting. There's an update on where we are with State Street. The mayor and I do the mayor manager show uh, the week after. That's on ACTV. So I would say the information's out there. It's available. We're going to do as b best we can to make that available. But I'm sitting at my office and pick up the phone, call me. Right. If you got a question, <laughs> well, I'm available. Is it, is it too much to ask mm -hmm. um, that because you know we're so closely you know connected with this mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. as merchants? that um, we could be the first to know when um, something happens and not relying on us just Well, to I'm going to tell the mayor first. And <laughs> I, I'm going to let him know. <laughs> and then right. we're going right. to immediately... I, mean, I, I don't yeah. want to, yeah. you know, but, but I, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't check the, the website all the right. time. Mm -hmm. But it would certainly be a really nice gesture from the mayor, from the town, to reach mm -hmm. out to the merchants immediately to know that, um, I mean, am I speaking for everybody or not? Well, we're going to be working with Katie and with Zach, and I mean, and that's clearly our intentions. I mean, we're, we're not withholding information. No, I know you're not. I know <laughs> so, you're not, but I mean, uh, just the communications to be, right. if that's too much to ask, No, I no, no, no. Ka now. Katie and Jordan, that, that's part of what, the, and that's part of our team here, and, and we're going to expand on that team with our ambassadors. We just haven't had information that was really uh, constituted the need to have another meeting. Nothing really has happened much. Okay. Well, then, uh, then, and then uh, as speaking as a merchant, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be nice to just say to the merchants, a personal, just like the invitation that we got, mm -hmm. um, merchants, we, this is where we're at right now. Yeah, that, and, absolutely. Um, we, we certainly I, I would, yeah. I would really appreciate that. Yeah. Can, can we talk about that for a second? So, so right now we have there, there is no you know, project underway, which means we don't have you know, signage up uh, around town because we don't want to spend money on signage that may not be true and accurate. Um, so that's not up. The website is up, and, and so we've done, as you can see here, maybe we have a time stamp on the part of the town council meeting, so you don't have to watch the whole 60 minutes. It is kept to 60 minutes. Um, but you can jump right to the timestamp that speaks to the streetscape to get information about it. And then these guys do a great show for the mayor uh, town manager show where um, Charlie Scott does an excellent job of pointing images anytime that they're talking about the streetscape project. So we have those. Um, we haven't necessarily had the collaborative structure in place um, with SRC, town, chamber, BDC, county to week to week be in touch and make sure that out of the you know seven Facebook channels that are available and um, websites that are available and e-blasts that are available that were all synced up. And that was part of why uh, Katie mentioned that off, off the bat is, is Monday morning meetings are critical <laughs> so that as soon as Brian hears, the rest of the team knows. And they really are uh, the channel to get that out to you all. But, but I will share that one of the things that we've been working on since last time we met was a mass communication system because the town didn't necessarily have uh, an up-to-date mass communication system. Um, so now it has Blackboard Connect, which is similar to what the school system has. Um, it can push out text messages, emails, uh, voice messages um, instantly. You know, as soon as you put it in there and, and send it out to select groups. That's going to be a much more efficient way to get information out. However, 
one of the things we've talked about with that is the town isn't necessarily uh, going to be in a position to give updates about events through that. That's not really appropriate. The town would be giving information through that that mass communication tool about road closures or emergency situations or water sewer. Water sewer. The chamber, however, um, has a, a shared access to that mass communication tool. So the chamber is really the, the appropriate entity to push out information that is more related to you know, events or rescheduling or um, in this case, I think that would probably be appropriate for them to send out an update as to um, where where the, the the bid lies because not everybody is interested in that and the town is it doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to risk people's risk people's safety later on sending an emergency message to someone who shut off their notifications because they were getting information about events that they weren't interested you know what I mean um, so they have to be kind of conservative into how, how they use that mass communication tool whereas the chamber uh, and the SRC can use it for things like this. So I, I say all that to, to share that there are a lot of different channels of communication um, and, and we're going to try to exercise all of those uh, in the process. Yeah, Jane? Need to let um, the chamber or the town know how they want to be connected. That's right. Because they can do it email, text, phone call. Yeah. And if you, if you haven't filled out that form, you should have gotten a form. Um, if you haven't filled out that form on your, your notification preferences, um, Jane would be a good point of contact for that. Um, and Peggy at the, at the town office uh, to make sure that you're set up with, you know, I prefer a text message versus a voice message and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Robin, for uh, that. And, and uh, we certainly are sensitive and, and uh, but we're, we're just kind of getting our team together now with Katie on and, and Jordan on recently we are we're in a much we're in a much better position to address those kinds of concerns and we certainly intend to do that so thank you Barbara uh, uh, Ron, one question that people keep asking me is as each day goes by and we're waiting for that phone call from Raleigh is our money safe yes Can they take it away from us no no, we're 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 good. Uh, no, I don't. So the there's a, good, the yeah, yeah. I think the biggest concern that we have now is that uh, our the model that we constructed and what our preliminary estimates were based on are two years old now. Uh, I think everyone knows that the economy is in a different place now than it was two years ago. So I do have some concern that when we, uh, and we've actually started working on that with our engineers to uh, update the budgets because uh, construction prices and uh, uh, tariffs that were not a part of the picture uh, two years ago may be a part of the picture now with some of the construction that we need to do. And we do know that the contractors are busy. Uh, so that's that's an unknown for us, and, and I don't want to stand up here and speculate about that, but that is an exercise that we are going through and one that we may have to address in terms of uh, where the pricing comes in uh, when we do the bids compared to where it was when we uh, had our numbers two years ago. So, yeah, that's a concern. Any other questions? Uh, if anybody else has any questions, at any time they can contact Brian at the town office down there. And if you haven't already, again, if you, like Zach said, if you haven't already signed up for the Blackboard Connect, because we do have the capability to send those messages out in groups, uh, in a group form, so only the people on Main Street would get it if there's something going on. Okay, so if you haven't done that, make sure that you sign up. One other thing, there is a. There is a, a, a spot on this website to give your input. Um, so this is a, a built-in uh, mechanism besides you know, going to the town council or just going and sitting down with Brian with a question that you have. Um, this is on there as well to ask a question that isn't covered in the FAQs. We have about 52 questions in the FAQ section that we've been gathering from, from dialogues like this. And I'll add the questions that you, that you asked tonight, Robin. Thank you. Um, that's got a lot of questions and answers, and we usually we, we always vet those with the with the engineering firm to make sure that we're accurate on everything. Um, but this gives you another portal to uh, send any questions that aren't addressed. So please feel free to to use that. 
All right. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Zach, for all the hard work on that. Appreciate that. Uh, our next segment is our Christmas lights that we want to talk about what we're doing in town, and I'm going to introduce uh, Margie Smith or Jeff or the whole crew, if I'm going to call I don't know. <laughs> Uh, they're going to come up and give you a little bit of an update right here on what we're doing and what's going on with the Christmas lights and how you can be a part of it also. Yep. Thank you, Wes. Uh, as I hope everybody knows, July 14th we had our drawdown that we've been planning for our fundraiser. And we'd step this thing out in f four segments. The first one was, was the drawdown, was the money, to try to figure out what we had to work with and what we could do. And... I think everybody knows that, that our objective was the first year to cover uh, the first two blocks, the two primary blocks, which is starting at the bank and, and going down to uh, Town Hall. And uh, our, what we were hoping to raise is $25,000. Our drawdown we did roughly about 17000 We had about 2000 expenses. We've got another 3000 pledged. Uh, possibly some more money coming in over that. So I think we're going to make our 25 mark, uh, maybe a little bit better than our 25 mark. Um, the whole concept and, and the way that number came up was, was uh, William and myself and, and uh, JB kind of figuring out what our light cost was going to be, what our scene cost was going to be. And those two blocks, especially in our first year, need to be big. I mean, it needs to really pop and stand out because we were afraid that if we couldn't do it right the first year, we would kind of set a precedent, let everybody down, and this thing was, needs to be a momentum builder where everybody would get behind it. And from that point, each year we could add another block or another block, extend the lights on out into other parts of, of town. So anyway, our fundraiser was fantastic. West did a bang-up job. Everybody had a lot, of, a lot of good time. We got a good write-up in the paper. Um, we got our seed money, so we know kind of what we can do now and where we can go. Um, JB, uh, Charlie, myself, we took an initiative there about the 4th of July to put up a few lights to kind of get an idea what it would look like. We started out just doing town hall. Um, then we had two or three merchants that wanted theirs done, so we went ahead and did their buildings. And the other thought behind that was, each one that we could kind of click off, every little piece of light that we could put up is just that much more that we don't have come October and November of this year. But now we start our second phase, which is um, getting permission, asking everybody what, tell them what we can do to their building and, and see if it's okay for a good for go. Uh, William is laying out scenes. End of this month, we'll order our scenes. Um, we hope to have everything in place ready to fire up by the Saturday before Thanksgiving. That's what we're shooting for. Um, so really, that's where we're at. This is going to be a big month. August 8th or 9th, and I haven't heard what's the final decision we're meeting with the Christmas Tree Growers Association, which is going to be a big part of this thing. Um, we're going to have um, the building's illuminated background illumination, scenes, and then we'll have some live exhibits. People want some real trees, real garland, that kind of thing. So that's where the Christmas tree growers come into. Um, so that's where we're at at this point. We have any questions? Go ahead. So the second phase, uh -huh. um, getting permission. Uh -huh. um, so can you go into detail on that? Um, getting permission from the building owners? Owners or merchants, yes. We'll contact the merchant and we may not know who the owner is. That may have to yes, go through the merchant I, to get there. The owner of our building, so um, I, I think I gave that name to whoever was talking. Um, I'm just curious as to know um, what that phase, uh, that's a pretty important phase because you've got to get permission and then you, they've got to choose. Are you giving um, the merchant or the, the building owner um, some different choices of what they can put up or no? No, no we're... We're illuminating the building, the background of the building. So we'll do the awning out front across the top, which you see in most towns Christmas that, that do this type thing. Now the scenes will be, um, where's William at? William. Scenes are going to be in, in public display. We've got eight or nine that you'd planned out. We have a lot of scenes that uh, we're planning out. There's. When I look through the catalogs and two different vendors, yes, we're going to have a lot. 
Um, we're letting the churches handle anything that's religious because we have three on Main Street that's going to do a spectacular job with that. We're going to take care of the snowmen, waving Santas and the reindeer and anything else associated with it. Uh, we're planning from down at the uh, county admin building all the way up as far as we can go. The more money we raise, the bigger it gets. And if we can go traffic light, traffic light this year, excellent. So there's a lot of different scenes. One of them in particular is a Santa and nine reindeer, which they want to put it above the cable on top of the roof. So you can see that's one of the first things you see coming into town. Uh, some of the other things like a reindeer farm scene, uh, that could be good at town hall. I don't know. We just we haven't planned out yet because our emphasis has been on fundraising. And now since we've got that under our belt behind us, now we're going to look to see what we can get and where we can place it and be viewed the best or have the best results out of the uh, the entire town um, so that's so, where we stand my I guess my concern is especially with like the buildings because I'm trying to have a visual of this okay Cause I love the idea but I my thought is um, if you're coming down the street and you have all these scenes in various places but the buildings themselves you want to have a cohesive look does that's that make sense? Do you guys? <laughs> yes. That's why you're not offering us choices. It's one set of lights, so everybody okay. matches. Everybody okay. looks the same. Okay, you so know. is it like white lights, or do we do we know that? They're LED lights, and we can change colors. So <coughs> we can do white lights. We can do Christmas themed lights. At the Fourth of July, we can do red, white, and blue lights. Okay, so what, if what anybody's been by my restaurant, I'm sure they've seen that it's red, white, and blue right now. Uh, We've just not changed it. Uh, we're probably getting ready to do wide or something mm -hmm. out there. But we can change it for like a different event. Like when it would have been a great thing when the, the girls won the softball. What if we could do the whole town green and yellow for a day to celebrate what they've done? So that's why there's no choices. These things, you've got a remote control system that you work on these things. If we give you choices and somebody picks A and somebody picks B, C, and D, it don't work. Well, so we're going to do one set of lights. Okay. We can do color. We can do not color. We can do, and it may change. We may decide that we do Christmas color for a while, and right at Christmas we do it all white. We don't know yet, but we have the capability. Okay. So what you, what, with that, with that in mind, so you've got a, a light system that's going to have a lot of different options that you can do all the things that you just said. Right. So will that be from where to where? I mean, are you trying to? Well, we're attempting, we still. Because you want to have a continuous line, right? I mean, you don't oh, yeah, well, want to. You, you might have a property owner that won't let us do it. Okay, <clears throat> uh, somebody may tell us that we can't put lights on their building. You know, that's the second phase. Right. Uh, we hope everybody does. You know, we're, we're trying to be all in unison and everybody together here and everybody work together. Mm -hmm. Somebody may not. Yeah. Well, I'm, th I'm thinking about when my landlord, if he calls me up and he's really good about that, I want to be able to speak wisely to him about this. I mean, if he, you know, wants to get some information from me um, to approve or not approve, I don't know if that's going to happen. He may just say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, do it. <coughs> um, but if he wants to contact me or, you know, one of them, do you, do you understand if he, what I'm if saying? he's got questions that that's beyond what we've discussed, he can get a hold of some of us. Okay. The the mayor is on the board, and then he can he can direct to any of the rest of us. There's around a dozen of us on in this committee subcommittee of the SRC. It's the three of us up here. JB Margie is the chair. Uh, you have Charlie Scott and who else? Karen is here. She's on our committee. Um, you have Debbie Weaver. You have Sarah Rudy. Susan Miles. Susan Miles, Sam and Julia Simmons. We have a big group of people that's dedicated, not only volunteering, but also spending our own money to make sure this happens, along with everybody else's support. So now we're in this planning phase, and we're trying to figure out what, when, where, because we got the money. Yes? So SRC had silhouette, what we call silhouette lights, that silhouette, like you're mm -hmm. doing, along the eave or the roof line or something. We had them before. So it's very similar to that. 
it's just a different kind of lighting system. And there's still hanging. Oh, there's there. still some hanging, yeah, yeah. but we had a lot of trouble with the wind and, exactly. and being able to keep them up and, and that kind of thing. So it's very similar well, to what we've had in the past. There again, that's why we're eliminating the choices. Mm -hmm. These things are a much more permanent right. And very expensive. Yeah, they're very, very expensive. It, 36 feet of these things cost us $80. I mean, but they are very nice, first rate. You know, we didn't want to do anything second rate in this. So, as far as it's going to cost us a lot of money to do it, but the part we get done is done right. Yeah, and the whole and we want to expand. The, the whole yeah. thing is, he's saying we want to be a hit this year. We need everybody to help and get on board this year because it will be permanent. Now, the money we raise next year will get a little bigger, and then the money we raise next year will get a little bigger. You know, so so we want to, it's not like that it's lights that's going to be perishable and we have to do it again each year. We have all this manpower putting up and taking down. We put them up, they're there. There's a special occasion for whatever reason and it's requested of us that, hey, can we do the town such and such? Well, if that's how everybody decides they want, then we can do that. And one reason we kind of went this direction with this lighting system, even though it's more expensive, if you think about it, there's a lot of towns that do Christmas. But I don't know of one that does 4th of July. I don't know of one that, you know, if you win a 1A softball championship or whatever, uh, homecoming would be another prime example. We may get more publicity off of homecoming or the 4th or the girls coming back in the bus and it lit up green and yellow than we do off the Christmas deal. So that was just kind of added caveat since we were going to do the lights that if we went to this next step, it, it may behoove us in the future for other things. Some of the things, you know, with the Christmas lighting, and we all talk about this a lot, is that once you get to the first traffic light down at Hardy's, you want to look up Main Street and say, wow, outstanding. And you want to be proud of your hometown. And the more we continue to build on this, the bigger it gets. I want a traffic issue to be here every night within five years. <laughs> I want that to be an issue. Now, police may not like it, but you know, but I want it to be a traffic issue because the more people come, the more they spend money, the more money in our pockets, the better at we thrive. The publicity that we get. We have somebody in the back. We get there. But on November the 16th, yeah. Friday, November the 16th at 6 o'clock at the courthouse, we're turning on the tree, we're flipping the lights on town, and kicking off choose and cut tree season. That's the three things that we're doing that night. One thing I might want to throw at them, we've had an idea to go ahead in our fundraising and try to help all the local businesses be part of this. You want to tell them, you want me to do it? You here, do it. Come on up here. What day did you say for the tree lining? November 16th, November 16th 6 p.m. Friday. Yep, Friday, yeah. Friday the 16th. Very preliminary idea. <clears throat> but uh, you may have seen, like, if, if you've been in my place, we got some little Santa Clauses. Uh, you've been to Tanya's place, we've got, what, a snowman, I think? Okay, we've got a Santa. Okay, you got yeah, the you snowman. Got snowman. Okay, well, well, what we're thinking, and we're, we've not got all the kinks worked out about the fundraising part. Uh, we're thinking we want to take one Santa and move him from business to business to business to business. You know, then we promote this thing on the Christmas page and, and maybe on the county page. I don't know. Uh, find Santa. You know, where's he at? Well, we're trying to get people in your business. We're trying to get them to put a little cash in the bucket, you know. We would like to tie that so that it's almost like a little game for town. You know, when people's coming from out of town and the, they, you know, well, let's go, every, let's walk up and down Main Street and look and try to find Santa. Now, it, our first thought is, well, if you walk in and you find Santa lit up and you're part of this thing, you know, there's some reward for this. Like I said, very preliminary. We don't have it all worked out yet. But how would everybody feel about having Santa for a day or two or five or something? And the main reason why. Yes, I think. Yeah. Make it a clear well, we want you guys. I know we're on the committee. But we're doing this for the, town. And we we got, want you guys to be part of this. There's a lot to figure out. We really hadn't figured out how we're going to do it, but they're going to have to call in, write in, say where he's at to win a prize, you know. 
Yeah, there that you go. Yeah, yeah, it could yeah. be. Selfie. So, you know, we got to figure out the preliminaries of how to make it work to where it, it benefits the person as well as the business and trying to find Santa or the snowman. Yeah. Snowman's out there. I'm Just, not the techie guy. I thought maybe everybody's got a cell phone. Maybe there's some kind of app. app. Maybe it don't cost, but I don't know. But, you know, if you had that, yeah, the selfie, send it in, you know, it gets back to us. And he may be our um, app guy. Who knows? Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know, but it it's, it's like a, I think it's a pretty positive idea to get everybody in everybody's business, you know, and we can all be part of the thing. We just got some bugs to work out. Yep. So if anybody's got good ideas on this to help, we would love to try to make that happen for us. And with this, you know, with our fundraising, that's the main reason why we're doing it because we never did ask the town or county for one penny and we didn't receive any so we're having to fundraise it and truly make it a community supported event mayor's going to push you out let's pay the power bills there's a circuit through town that that's what we used on the fourth uh in a trial basis uh now the scenes and that may run into an issue as to where we have these things is whether we have power source or not to to draw some of it. The scene, but we're going the, to try to use that loop speak on the LED. that the other Christmas lights work off of now. Uh, that's kind of where we're headed. Now all that changes in this dreams thing. But uh, currently the, the town to answer your question. Yeah the town, the town takes it on that loop. Now if they if they help with that then that may be part of the project I right. don't know. Right now the meter the meters that are currently connected the charge comes the it's LED lighting, so just figure that it pulls 80% less than a standard compared or compared standard incandescent light bulb. 80% less, so it's really just cents on a dollar, if that, and that's over days. I mean, in my light display in Galax, uh, I'm 99% LED, and if I had to estimate the power consumption I have, which I have some DC lights as well. I figure about 150 to 200 bucks for the entire 41 days. I'm gonna light. Yes. How, how many strands have we got up? Nine. Yeah, I think place? we got nine or ten of them now. I think I've got like nine strands at my restaurant. We can tell zero difference in the power bill. Now, granted, I've got a pretty big power bill, but zero difference. Uh, I think if everybody wound up footing their own bill, they would hardly notice. I mean, you're talking. Surely it would be worth a dollar, two, or five, maybe ten, you know, for the, uh, it, it will be very negligible, we're sure. we got to wrap this up, the mayor's trying to turn our switch off. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't y'all long-winded. <laughs> but if you have any more, if you, yes. if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact Margie or Jeff, JB, William, uh, and they'll answer all your questions there about the Christmas lights. Up next, Jordan is, is, and Katie are going to come up and they're going to talk about music on Maine. Okay. And here's Jordan. I think Katie's still a little nervous, so she's going to set out this one. So I'm really excited about Music on Main. Whenever I took on this job, that was something that I really knew was a part of it. And then the Christmas lights were a bonus. So just so you guys know, if you have a great idea of something that you want to do in this community, please come to me. That's what the SRC is here for. We have a great ideas form. Hasn't been used yet by anybody in my administration, and I'd really like to say that I helped promote one along the way. So I want to go through the lineup because a lot of these bands sound really wonderful for the next Music on Main, which is August 3rd. We have Crabgrass, which is a bluegrass and bluegrass gospel band. We have a folk artist, Ashley Heath. This one's my personal favorite, a jazz band named Bedroom Sessions. That sounds pretty fabulous to me. On the local stage, we're going to have Rise and, si Rise and Shine, which is an old-time bluegrass country band. And then our headliner is going to be Big Daddy Love, which we can all be excited about because of their hometown roots. So... That's all I have about the upcoming schedules. If you guys want to see the rest of Music on Main's upcoming band schedules, please don't hesitate to give me a call at the chamber. I'm there and I'm available to talk about Music on Main. And does anybody have any questions? Wonderful, thank you. William, you need to take after her, man. That was short, man. When I was in television, I only had a buck 30 to talk. That's all right, all right. Our, our last subject that we're going to bring up tonight, and Miss Katie's going to come up and talk about this, and this involves you guys, the merchants, and we want your opinions on stuff, and I'm going to let her elaborate from there. 
Thank you. And thank you again for your time. We know it's valuable. And all these things, everything that we've, we've talked about tonight is definitely going to make us in the know a little bit more. And I want to give you um, just a little, we are here to help communicate, help build our community, and know we are building a team. And I'm really proud of the group that I've been working with every Monday. And we'll continue to strive to get as much, and I'll even say over-communicate. I, I go into Robin's every, when she's there, and I'm like, I'm over-communicating. And even with handing out the invitations, you saw, a couple of you saw Jordan one time, and you saw me the other time. We, we really want to over-communicate. We're here. We want to be as transparent as possible. Um, uh, this was our first meeting. I know we used to have a meeting, a merchant's meeting, and we'd like to see who's interested in doing this every month or every other month. Um, by raise of hands, is this something that, as a merchants downtown and in, in, in our community, interested in doing this bi-monthly, monthly? Let's say monthly. How many people? Bi-monthly? Okay. Or we can maybe do quarterly. Quarterly seems a little bit more. I know we all have a lot of busy schedule. Um, and we'll continue. I'll continue to visit you and talk to you and be very visible. Jordan and I have been trying to really walk around and, and be very visible on the streets and visible in, in your storefront supporting you, listening to you. If there's a question, we want to answer it. And if we don't have the answer, we're going to plug you into where the answer is. So um, it's an exciting time here in Allegheny County. Uh, thrilled to be working with the folks and working with our merchants and um, my doors. I'm always available if you need me. I'd like to invite you over to have some snacks because some of our local um, merchants provided some snacks tonight. Kathy Murphy at Kathy's Creation made cookies. Becca um, also made muffins, brownies, and cookies. And then we have Shauna and Bill's uh, wonderful pimento cheese from Muddy Creek Cafe. So please, and there's bottled water, stay around, talk. If you have any questions, uh, let us know. And we, we so much appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.